I never wanted to be captain. Let me start with that. Anyone who tells you being a captain is the dream job has never worked under Captain Karen Shrill. Sure, some people are born to lead. Then there's Karen, born to micromanage, complain, and somehow ruin even the simplest of tasks. I'm John Samuels, former second-in-command of the USS Vindication. It's important to clarify that I didn't earn my current rank through heroism, intelligence, or any semblance of normal competence. Nope, I got this command because Karen happened. And if you think that sounds ominous, you have no idea. Let me paint the scene. Karen, in her glory, was the type of captain who could turn a routine maintenance check into a three-hour PowerPoint presentation about dust mites. You couldn't make this stuff up. The crew tried to love her. We really did. At first, there were polite nods, fake smiles, and the occasional, Yes, ma'am! Great idea! But eventually, even the most patient among us wanted to launch ourselves into the vacuum of space just to escape her endless tirades about, well, anything. Her obsession with proper protocol wasn't just about rules. It was about control. Karen didn't just enforce the dress code. She lived for it. Uniforms had to be pressed to perfection. Boots had to gleam. She once docked an officer's pay because his hair was half a millimeter too long. She had the precision of a laser and the soul of an HOA president. So there we were, floating in the middle of nowhere on a routine patrol mission. A quiet, dull sector. Perfect for getting Karen out of the way. She couldn't possibly mess this up, right? Wrong, John. We need efficiency. We'll take a shortcut, Karen declared one morning, flipping through star maps like she knew what she was doing. Ma'am, I think we should stick to the planned route. It's well charted, safe, I tried. Oh, how I tried. Safe is for slackers, John. Do you want to be a slacker? Her eyes narrowed. Karen's stare was legendary. It was like being judged by an over-caffeinated librarian. I bit my tongue. No, ma'am. And that's how we ended up way off course in the middle of, well, who the hell knows where. Not even our navigation AI could make sense of Karen's shortcut. As luck or should I say Karen, would have it, we stumbled upon an interstellar cluster of alien pirates raiding a primitive planet. A bunch of space pirates, armed to the teeth, busy plundering a society that was barely out of its mud hut phase. Great. Now, here's the thing about human technology. Our ships, they're powerful, like could vaporize your whole fleet before breakfast powerful. And the USS Vindication was no exception. But Karen, in her infinite wisdom, looked at our overpowered ship and said, You know what? We should talk to them. Diplomacy is key. You ever feel a headache coming on so strong, it almost takes over your entire body? That was me in that moment. Ma'am, I said, already knowing it was pointless. We're heavily armed. We could take out their ships with minimal effort. John, she replied as if explaining basic arithmetic to a toddler. That's precisely the problem. We don't want to scare them. We want them to understand that we're friendly, diplomatic, negotiators. I'll handle this. And by handle this, what she meant was make things exponentially worse. She opened a channel to the pirate leader, a scarred, drooling alien who looked like he hadn't bathed since the last millennium. His voice was deep, guttural, and clearly uninterested in any sort of negotiation. What do you want, human? He spat. Karen cleared her throat, standing tall, as if she were delivering a TED talk on polite conversation. Greetings, representatives of whatever species you are. I am Captain Karen Shrill of the United Systems Ship Vindication. I want you to know that I understand your situation. Life as a pirate must be hard, what with all the plundering and chaos. But fear not, I am here to offer you something far greater than riches or weapons. I am here to offer you peace. The silence was deafening. I swear, the entire ship held its collective breath, waiting to see if the pirate would burst out laughing or start shooting. The pirate leader tilted his head, clearly baffled. Peace? Yes. Karen's face lit up like she'd just invented the concept. Peace, and perhaps some etiquette lessons. I'm sure your raiding techniques could benefit from a little more structure. Have you considered using customer feedback forms? I was ready to eject myself out of the nearest airlock. To our collective shock, and by some miracle of bad decision-making on the pirates' part, they agreed to board our ship to discuss terms. I watched in horror as Karen invited them aboard with the enthusiasm of someone hosting a Tupperware party. 
As soon as the pirates set foot on the Vindication, they were visibly confused. They'd expected resistance, lasers, maybe a dramatic last stand. Instead, they were greeted by Karen, who had prepared an actual PowerPoint presentation on intergalactic trade and manners. I think you'll find that the key to successful piracy isn't just brute force, she explained, clicking through slides. It's about presenting yourselves in a way that makes your victims feel respected. Now, let's talk about uniform standards. You'll notice that your current wardrobe choices are a bit disorganized. The pirate leader, who by now had given up trying to understand what was happening, glanced at his crew. They were just as bewildered. No one was sure if this was a trick, a trap, or if they had simply stumbled into the weirdest hostage situation in galactic history. I looked around at the human crew, all of us armed to the teeth, fully capable of retaking the ship at any moment. But we didn't move. We didn't fire a single shot. We just watched. Why? Because as much as we hated Karen, we had to admit, it was kind of satisfying watching her torture someone else for a change. The pirates, hardened criminals, were visibly squirming under her relentless lecturing. One by one, they started to lose their patience. Karen had somehow turned a band of bloodthirsty marauders into a bunch of scolded schoolchildren. And you know what? It was glorious. But then came the real kicker. After about an hour of this madness, Karen decided to take things to the next level. I think, she announced, that the real problem here isn't your lack of manners. No, it's something deeper. You need a change of heart. What followed next will forever be burned into my brain. Karen dragged the pirate leader down to the planet's surface. You know the primitive one? The one with mud huts and spears? Yeah, that one. She wanted to show him the value of humility. And the pirates, probably too confused to resist, let her do it. Now, here's the part where you're expecting me to tell you we staged a mutiny, took the ship back, and blasted off into the stars to escape the madness. But no, we didn't. We were curious. What the hell was Karen planning? And that's when things got weird. Really weird. We all followed her down to the planet, a mix of morbid curiosity and disbelief keeping us glued to the unfolding train wreck. Karen, in all her blustering glory, marched through the alien village with the pirate leader in tow like a misbehaving child. The villagers, a deeply religious, pre-industrial society, stared at us in a mixture of fear and awe. Of course, they had no idea what was about to hit them. Now, Karen had managed to mismanage every encounter up until this point. But by some cruel twist of cosmic fate, everything she did on this planet seemed to line up perfectly with the locals' religious prophecies. That's right, the prophecies. Apparently, these people were waiting for a messianic figure, some kind of divine being that would arrive in a great flying metal bird, covered in light and noise, to deliver them from their enemies. So, when Karen stepped off the shuttle, in her pristine uniform, barking orders at everyone, aliens, pirates, her own crew, it was like the stars had aligned. Now, this is how you do a proper introduction, she boomed, gesturing grandly to the sky, as if she'd choreographed her own arrival. I expect gratitude for saving you from these uncultured ruffians. She gave the pirate leader a withering look. Now sit up straight, we're going to have a talk about respect. The villagers knelt, not out of terror, but out of reverence. They began chanting something in their guttural language, and one of them, I swear this is true, presented her with a ceremonial staff. A staff, which Karen immediately took, of course, thinking it was a sign of her natural authority. Oh, what a quaint gesture, she said, waving the staff in the air, as if she were conducting an orchestra. See, this is the respect I've been talking about, people. The pirates looked at each other dumbfounded. The human crew just stood there, mouths agup. And me? I was wondering what kind of nightmare I'd stumbled into, where Karen was now a goddess, and we were somehow along for the ride. John, Karen called out to me from across the village square. These people understand order. They understand leadership. I'm going to teach them how to civilize this place. There's so much potential here. Just look at this architecture. She gestured toward their mud huts as if they were the pyramids of Giza. Ma'am, I said, desperately trying to think of an excuse to get us back to the ship. Maybe we should let them, uh, manage their own affairs? We've got other duties. 
Nonsense, John. These people need guidance. They've been waiting for someone to show them the right way to do things. At this point, I was trying to decide whether to laugh or cry. This was peak Karen. She turned an alien pirate raid into a self-appointed mission to teach a primitive society about manners. And they were buying it. The pirates, meanwhile, were losing their minds. The village was quickly transforming into some kind of bizarre revolutionary camp, led by none other than Karen herself, while the pirates were forced into increasingly humiliating roles. Their leader, the same guy who had swaggered onto the vindication with the confidence of a space warlord, was now sitting cross-legged in the middle of a circle of villagers, listening to Karen lecture about proper posture. I don't know if it was Stockholm Syndrome, sheer confusion, or some combination of the two, but Karen had these pirates wrapped around her finger. Days went by. Karen, still convinced she was doing the galaxy's most important work, had somehow managed to completely flip the dynamic between the pirates and the villagers. The pirates were now Karen's personal project. She'd designed a curriculum for them which included basic etiquette, conflict resolution, and, God help me, a lesson on table manners. I've decided to institute a reward system for good behavior, Karen announced one morning, as if she were running a kindergarten class. The pirates have been making excellent progress. I glanced over at the so-called pirate army. They were huddled together, looking more like prisoners than the terrifying marauders they'd once been. One of them, an eight-foot-tall, scarred monster of an alien, was holding a napkin, struggling to figure out which side of the plate it went on. Excellent progress, I muttered under my breath. John, Karen called, pulling me out of my trance. We're making history here. These people will tell stories about me for generations. That's what I'm afraid of. You can't... The human crew, by this point, had stopped trying to make sense of anything. We still had full control of the ship, but no one wanted to leave just yet. Morale had oddly improved. Watching Karen systematically dismantle the pirate crew's spirit was like live theater. Sure, we could have left, but why miss the show? One of the more seasoned crew members, Lieutenant Jacobs, approached me with a grin. Sir, I've got 50 credits on Pirate Captain Snaggletooth over there cracking by the end of the week. I rubbed my temples. Jacobs, you know gambling on alien breakdowns isn't exactly in the handbook, right? He shrugged. It's not like we're going anywhere. As much as I hated to admit it, Jacobs was right. There was a dark sort of humor in all of this. The pirates, once feared and ruthless, were now like students stuck in an eternal classroom where the only escape was doing things Karen's way. And honestly, they didn't seem to have the energy to rebel anymore. Then things took an even stranger turn. Karen, high on her own power trip, decided that the local villagers needed to rise up against the pirates. Now the pirates were already broken, but Karen wasn't satisfied. She wanted drama. One evening, Karen rallied the villagers in the village square. The aliens gathered around her, holding primitive torches and chanting. The pirates, clearly terrified, were pushed into the center of the crowd. Karen stood atop a wooden platform, the ceremonial staff in hand, and began a speech that will haunt my nightmares forever. My people, she shouted, her voice echoing through the alien village. Today we rise, no longer will we live under the tyranny of poor behavior. Today we correct the mistakes of the past. Today we teach these pirates the true meaning of civility. The villagers cheered, the pirates whimpered, I wanted to die. And to mark this historic occasion, she continued, with a flourish of her staff, we will hold a revolution, a peaceful one, of course. But we will overthrow the old ways and bring forth a new era of politeness and structure. At this point, I had no idea what was happening. Was this a mutiny? A coup? Some kind of galactic manners uprising? None of it made sense, but the villagers were eating it up. They began marching toward the pirates, torches in hand, chanting phrases they'd obviously picked up from Karen. Say please, one of them yelled. Thank you, shouted another. The pirates, completely demoralized, sat down and began apologizing profusely for their past behavior. I caught a glimpse of their leader, who was trying to hide behind one of the mud huts. Karen had done it. She'd staged a revolution. A revolution of manners. And then, as if things couldn't get any more bizarre, the pirate leader stepped forward, clutching his chest.
Please, he begged. No more. Etiquette classes. We surrender. We'll... we'll be good. Karen smiled triumphantly. Well then, we've reached an understanding. You're welcome. At that exact moment, I heard the familiar hum of an incoming ship. A human dreadnought, larger than the Vindication, descended from the sky. It seemed that Command had finally sent backup, probably assuming we were all captured or dead. As the massive ship hovered above us, I looked up, hoping that the sight of reinforcements would end the madness. But no, of course not. Karen didn't even flinch. She was too busy accepting a wreath of flowers from the villagers, still basking in her own delusions of grandeur. The human admiral's voice boomed over the comms. This is Admiral Cartwright of the USS Monolith. We're here to assist. What is the situation on the ground? I looked around at the torches, the cheering villagers, the defeated pirates, and Karen, still holding her staff like a victorious warrior queen. Uh. I fumbled for the comm. It's under control, sir. I'll explain. As the USS Monolith hovered above, I could only imagine what Admiral Cartwright and his crew were thinking. They'd come expecting to find a crew under siege, maybe a hostage situation. Probably a violent showdown between pirates and humans. What they got instead was a full-blown, Karen-led cult revolution. I scrambled to the comms. Admiral Cartwright, this is Commander Samuels of the USS Vindication. I can explain the situation, but it's, uh, unique. Unique? Cartwright's voice crackled through the speaker, thick with confusion and skepticism. We received reports of a pirate attack. Why are you still on the planet? Where is Captain Shrill? I glanced over at Karen, now sitting on a hand-carved throne, being fanned by the local villagers while one of the pirates, once their feared leader, polished her boots. She's, uh, managing a delicate negotiation, I said, trying my best not to laugh or scream. The pirates have surrendered, Admiral. Surrendered? Without a fight? Yes, sir. Karen, uh, Captain Shrill, used unconventional methods. Unconventional methods? Cartwright's voice took on a dangerous tone, as if he was trying to decide whether I was incompetent or just insane. Let's just say her leadership style isn't something you'll find in any official tactical manuals, I replied, feeling my sanity slowly unraveling as the situation defied all logic. Cartwright clearly wasn't satisfied. Prepare for my arrival, Commander. We'll be docking shortly. I expect a full report. Oh boy. It didn't take long for Admiral Cartwright to land. He and a contingent of Marines disembarked, weapons drawn, ready to storm the place. I watched with a mixture of dread and amusement as they walked into the village and found absolutely nothing they could have prepared for. Imagine this, a group of hardened marines bristling with high-tech gear walking into a scene that resembled a village festival. The pirates, once fearsome space marauders, were sweeping the streets, tending to gardens, and politely serving snacks to the human crew. Karen, now wearing a headdress made of what looked like alien fruit, sat at the head of a long table, presiding over some sort of banquet. Admiral Cartwright's jaw dropped as he took it all in. His marines hesitated, clearly unsure whether they were supposed to arrest someone, or just leave. Commander Samuels, Cartwright said slowly, as though he couldn't trust his own eyes. What the hell am I looking at? I motioned to the scene around us. Welcome to the Karen Conundrum, Admiral. Karen noticed the Admiral and immediately stood up arms wide, as if welcoming an old friend to her personal kingdom. Ah, Admiral Cartwright, she called, striding over with the confidence of someone who believed they had single-handedly saved the galaxy. I'm so glad you've arrived. You're just in time to see the fruits of my leadership. The what of your leadership? Cartwright replied, still trying to process the fact that Karen was apparently being worshipped by both the aliens and the pirates. Yes, you see, these pirates were simply misunderstood. She gestured to a group of pirates, who were now sitting in a circle on the ground, engaged in what looked like a group therapy session. They just needed proper guidance and a little discipline. And now they've turned over a new leaf. Cartwright blinked. So, you're telling me you converted a bunch of space pirates into peaceful villagers? Exactly. Karen smiled proudly. It was all about instilling respect and manners. She winked at him as if she'd just solved the galaxy's biggest problem. I could see Cartwright trying to keep his composure, 
his lips twitching as if he couldn't decide whether to scream or laugh. Captain Shrill, you do realize this is highly irregular, right? Karen gave a dismissive wave. Oh, Admiral, don't be so old-fashioned. These pirates are no longer a threat, and this planet now sees me as a beacon of hope and leadership. Isn't that what Starfleet's all about? There was a pause. Cartwright looked around at his marines, who were now standing awkwardly as one of the pirates offered them snacks. I could almost hear his brain screaming for help. Right, Cartwright muttered. We'll have to debrief. On the ship. Back on the monolith, Cartwright tried his best to keep the debrief professional. But how do you even begin to explain what had happened? How do you write a report about a captain who turned pirates into terrified choir boys through the power of badgering? So let me get this straight, Cartwright said, his head resting on his hand in what I assumed was an attempt to stave off a migraine. The pirates surrendered because they couldn't handle etiquette lessons? More or less, I replied, trying not to sound too sarcastic. And the villagers now think she's a god? Yep. And you didn't stage a mutiny because... Because, sir, we were curious. He let out a long, weary sigh. I've been in this fleet for thirty years, Samuels, and I have never heard of anything this absurd. Me neither, sir. Just as we were wrapping up, a transmission came through from Fleet Command. It was the kind of transmission that made your heart sink before you even heard the message. The kind where you know something stupid is about to happen. Admiral Cartwright, this is High Command. We've reviewed the report on Captain Shrill's handling of the pirate situation. It appears that her unconventional methods have had an unexpected ripple effect. Pirate activity across the sector has plummeted. Cartwright blinked. Excuse me, what? The voice continued. Reports indicate that word of Captain Shrill's negotiation tactics has spread through the pirate ranks. It seems they believe she is some sort of omnipotent human force of terror. Many pirate groups have disbanded rather than risk facing her. I almost choked. Was this real? Therefore, the voice concluded, Captain Shrill is being promoted to Fleet Admiral of the 37th Fleet, tasked specifically with handling all pirate-related activities in the galaxy. I saw Cartwright's face drain of color. You've got to be kidding me. No, sir. Fleet Admiral Shrill will now oversee the newly created Anti-Pirate Command, effective immediately. Command out. The room was silent, dead silent. Cartwright stared at the wall as if it had just insulted his entire family. Karen was going to be in charge of the entire pirate problem. I don't know if it was the absurdity of the situation or sheer exhaustion, but I started laughing, quietly at first, then louder. Cartwright shot me a look like I had lost my mind, but I couldn't stop. Karen had somehow turned into the galaxy's ultimate anti-pirate weapon through sheer incompetence and the power of being an insufferable human being. Cartwright rubbed his temples. Samuels, this is going to end badly, isn't it? I managed to catch my breath, wiping a tear from my eye. Oh, absolutely, sir. And that's how Karen Shrill, the worst captain in the fleet, became the most feared name among pirates across the galaxy. As for the rest of us? Well, we're stuck here in her shadow, watching the galaxy brace itself for what's to come. Because if you think pirates were bad, just wait until they meet Fleet Admiral Karen. The End or perhaps the beginning of a galaxy wide nightmare. Thank you for watching. Like, share, and subscribe for more original content. New chapters and standalone stories uploaded weekly.